Hello everyone, another episode of uh, the Mercury FDI Talks uh, today. Uh, I'm the host, Marios Tsokos, uh, also Managing Director of Mercury Global Reports. And it's a pleasure and uh, an honor to have with us uh, Lena Miranda, who is the CEO of uh, Lichabing uh, Science Park, uh, as well as the International President of the International Association of Science Parks and uh, Areas of Innovation. Um, Lena, it's a pleasure to have you with us. I'm very honored to be here. Thank you. And uh, starting from the beginning of the discussion, uh, if you can give us uh, a brief of background and the role of the um, IASP. Well, uh, the IASP, it stands for in International Association of Science Parks and Areas of Innovation. And it's an industry organization that gathers all of these different innovation hubs across the globe and we are covering more than 80 countries with more than 330 members. So it's quite a unique and extensive uh, uh, network. And it's a, it's a true global network, which I find very, very interesting and rewarding to be part of. And what we do is of course, to gain a lot of knowledge, to share knowledge, to use our peers to learn about how a different part of the world is driving innovation in different and various ways. So we learn from uh, each other uh, in different kinds of events and conferences and also one-to-one -one meetings, of course. So it's a, a very great organization. It's independent, it's non-profit, non-governmental organization, and it's been operating since 1984, so we're celebrating 40 years this year. That's great. Yes. That's great. And uh, yourself, how, how long have you been in uh, in this position? Uh, I've been in the position as CEO of Lynn Shepping Science Park for 10 years. I joined uh, the board of ISP five years ago. Then I was the European Division President. And uh, I was that for two years. And then I was the Vice uh, President for the association two years and since one year i'm the international president so it's great yeah and but my organization has been part ever since the start in 1984 so we have a long relationship between lynn shopping and the isp network Perfect. okay so if we can get an idea of how the ecosystem the innovation ecosystem developed especially post covid which we, mm -hmm. we saw a lot of a lot of you know developments and advancements so you can give us an overview on the evolution of this ecosystem globally yeah so uh, from the beginning uh, we were called science and technology parks and you could say that we are kind of organization managed by specialized professional who is uh, engaged in increasing the wealth of uh, our communities and mm -hmm. promoting culture of innovation and uh, supporting economical growth for our local administrations, but also regional and national, of course. Um, and uh, a few years back, maybe like five or six years back, we also included areas of innovation because we could see that many science parks grew and um, uh, established more sites within a city or a region. So you can have different sites with different specialization, and then you become kind of an area of innovation, which is a wider geography covering more uh, industry sectors and, and different science uh, fields and, and uh, innovation. Okay. And... And today we see also the evolution of innovation districts uh, where sustainability is dri driven mainly from the, the cities and the, the mayors of the cities like ambassadors for driving climate change. And we also see that many cities are establishing what we call innovation districts where they can implement climate agendas in the innovation strategies to drive both innovation and economic development. And we see the creation of, of co-working spaces, which have grown during COVID and after COVID because the whole landscape of how we work and when we work and where we work is changing. Uh, so the physical uh, spaces of the innovation centers are, I would say, under reconstruction. 
and we have a lot of do you call it tutors in in english like working tuesday wednesday uh thursday or tvt okay yeah yeah um, because maybe you work from home two days a week or three days a week so the the office space is undergoing change uh, in various ways, but you also need to stimulate uh, attraction in new ways to get people to, you know, get the feeling of fear of missing out. If I don't go to the science park, what will I miss today? Uh, so it's, um, that is one of the changes that we can see after COVID. But okay. also, of course, uh, people looking towards those innovation spaces to uh, strengthen the network, strengthen understanding in very uncertain times to learn how to navigate uh, the future and and try to have a collective understanding of global trends. Any any sectors that uh, picked up uh, after COVID? Uh, well, I would say the tech sector have really strengthened its um, um, both uh, knowledge and adaption in a wider perspective because so many industries were digitalized during the the covid because yeah. we couldn't do it physically so it moved out into the digital space and we could see that more or less every company or operation is becoming one kind of tech company because you are uh, implementing digitalization in different parts of the operations uh, and this is something I, I foresee will uh, continue uh, but also of course when you digitalize fast and you do it very widely you also get more vulnerable for uh, hacker attacks and, and yeah. different kinds of, of um, security um, uh, failures so we need to also um, implement uh, security strategies and cyber strategies in order to keep safe. Exactly, mm. exactly. And uh, of these uh, companies, these um, uh, technology companies, uh, have you seen any, uh, what's the trend when it comes to investing into uh, into the science parks and the uh, research well, innovation? That's a very good question. And, and I would say it's kind of different in different parts of the world where we can see many countries uh, investing heavily in um, self-supplying uh, important technology fields like uh, I IoT, AI, cybersecurity, quantum, um, a lot of like uh, 6G and cloud, uh, cloud technologies, well, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, which will be very important in the future. Um, and countries that are implementing innovation strategies into their governmental strategies when it comes to investing heavily in R&D at the universities, uh, but also giving maybe uh, science parks and different uh, innovation hubs special policies to maybe have uh, tax incentives for establishing or maybe to hire a uh, skilled personnel or even uh, that you can uh, elaborate uh, a lot with different uh, kind of policies and, and work outside of regulations to try out new technologies in some kind of sandboxes or you could call it uh, uh, pilots uh, when it comes to policy and regulation. So these are different tools that we uh, see are being implemented across the world. The U.S. have their um, uh, their investment into green transition. Uh, the IRA uh, and special economic zones is another uh, kind. It, at ISP, uh, we have together with the Global Alliance of Special Economic Zones also establish something that we call the SDG model zones to just highlight the importance of sustainability and the development goals and inspire more innovation hubs to become uh, accelerators for driving change in a more sustainable way. Exactly. So we try to inspire with different examples of social innovation, uh, energy transition and new economic development. Uh, uh, Very models. nice. Mm. Which um, uh, what what do you think is the um, 
is the role of these uh, parks and uh, areas of nature when it comes to the economic development of the place. Yeah, so of course, every uh, science park or innovation hub is grown from a different context. Like what is the dynamics of the business community where I'm operating? What are the special fields of science at the university where I'm based? Uh, what are the talent pool that is attracted to my place and how can I contribute to the economic growth of my uh, um, city or region? So that is kind of the base and trying to understand uh, the cross-sectorial, uh, cross-disciplinary collaboration that could actually make a positive impact on economy but also taking sustainability into consideration. Exactly. So uh, and trying out new models and being like this what you, uh, uh, accelerator for new, new innovation that we see have positive effects, both economically and sustainability uh, wise is, I would say the, 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 the idea most important. Of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, how 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 is it to try to attract those investors or those um, those people to come there and invest? I'm, I suppose there is a lot of competition. Uh, yes, of course between, there is. Yeah. And I would say, like, if you have a country investing heavily in R and D, that's of course very positive. Uh, we could see from I'm based in Sweden that we have a very good position when it comes to green transition and and yes. taking responsibility in in. Uh, climate change uh, but you need to have something that you can promote as a country as a region as the place where you are based uh, to be a magnet for uh, driving uh, investments of various kinds and I would also say that the the academia or the university have a very strong position to yeah. uh, to drive attraction uh, of investments and new companies because many of them from my experience come to uh, establish to get um, uh, connected to the knowledge to the research to the education to the talent pool yeah. people skilled people and smart people tend to attract more smart people so that is really important that they find the place where they like and where they want to be based uh, to attract more more skilled people, and when, and you will have the investments. When it comes to Sweden, let's say just for as, a, as an example, um, when it comes to Sweden and the talent pool, um, mm -hmm. is, is is there enough, or no. do they have to? No, huh? there's never enough talent pool. Huh? It's never enough. No. No. So uh, no, of course uh, there's a competition within Sweden, but also internationally. So yeah. I think uh, we we depending on where we're based uh, across the globe, we have different challenges, right? In uh, the West world, we have a population which is getting older. Exactly. If you turn to Africa or India, 50% uh, of the population is under 15 years old. And this year during the annual conference for the ISP, which will be hosted in Nairobi, Kenya, which yeah. I'm really looking forward to, we are discussing demography, entrepreneurship, and innovation. And I think this will be super interesting because what will be um, the uh, consequences of this very different demographies across the world uh, in the future and how can uh, the Africa and India use uh, the fact that they have a big and growing population of young people and how can they support the needs in the West world and how will AI and automatization um, have an impact on this? So it's, it's so many different questions that uh, I really look forward to discuss. Further. Is it the first, uh, the first one in Africa, first conference? It's not the first one in Africa, but during my 10 years, we have not been to Africa. I know uh, there was a conference in South Africa uh, uh, a few years before I started. Before. And we also had a conference in the Middle East, in I think it was in Qatar. 
Uh, but last year we were in Luxembourg, so now we're really looking forward to visit it's, Nairobi. It's something different, huh? something, something very different. Very different. Yeah. I'm, I'm so much looking forward to learn more about the ecosystem, innovation ecosystem in Africa. Okay, and who, who is invited? Let's uh, let's also invite our audience. Uh, is is Absolutely. only uh, tech, is only technology companies or? Uh... They are definitely uh, uh, invited, but. Uh, of course, there will be a lot of, of innovation uh, uh, pioneers from uh, science and technology parks, uh, areas of innovation, innovation districts, but also universities, R&D institutions, and of course, the companies are more than welcome to join. Very nice. Excellent. Uh, so that will be also a good opportunity for us. Yes. Content, huh? yeah, yes that'll be good in, in, in Yeah, Nairobi. and I think it's such a good platform to learn and, and discuss, but also, of course, do business and, and learn from where should I take my investments uh, in the future. Very nice. Um, other um, things that uh, investors uh, should consider and also parks uh, can consider in order to attract those investors, what are those um, um, aside from the talent pool? Yeah, I think the importance of, of being uh, international from the start and also being uh, inclusive uh, towards people coming from the outside. Okay. I mean, you drive as an innovation leader, uh, often you drive a community based in your place and different communities that take part of your uh, innovation hub. Yeah. Uh, but you also need to um, have into consideration the inclusiveness and that it should be easy to tap into your innovation ecosystem if you choose to move there. Uh, and that's independent of you know, if you are a, a talented uh, individual or a company or an investor or something else. Uh, so to just uh, uh, be very welcoming and open to new influences and have the mindset of learning. Yeah, I think that, I... that's a good thing. And also have the mindset of maybe not everyone wants to get based in your region, but I want to work with your region because it's really interesting. And then you can have the mindset of, of trans, soft trans, transfer, like, okay, you can come, you can spend one week, two weeks in our region and learn a lot of things, but you can also learn us from your perspective and, and what you bring to the table. So to have this kind of open mindset, I think is okay. important. Do you think there's an unequal competition between uh, developed and uh, developing countries uh, when it comes to attracting those uh, companies? Definitely not. No? Of course not. Uh, but what I also see that I find very interesting because in one way we are very uh, similar because we can um, have similar models or setups or have the same challenges or possibilities. Uh, and in other ways we are very different because we, we have uh, different local and regional context, but also, of course, uh, uh, nationwide or if you are in different parts of the globe. What we see in the developing countries is that they can pivot, they, they can leapfrog some of the models that we have had in the West world, which might have been very good at one point, but that might get outdated uh, in today's, uh, uh, yeah. you know, um, world. So there's a lot that the developed countries can learn from the less developed countries as well. Uh, and when you look, for instance, to Africa, you can see uh, the young populations with so many ideas, so much passion that want, they want to bring into those processes and contribute in so many different ways. And I, I find that very uh, hopeful. Uh, and if there's something the globe needs today, it's, you know, a bit of hope. Hope, and hope and future. ideas, huh? And yes, ideas. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So to really, as an investor, see where this movement is in different parts uh, of the globe, I would find very fascinating and, and see where do I want to tap in? Where do I want to be part of a future movement? And where do I think that ideas can come to life? Uh, in a new way. Excellent. Perfect. Mm. Okay, let's go to Lena Miranda yeah. and uh, understand a bit more. Uh, you've been all your career into this uh, sector, was it? Uh, not quite. I, not quite. I was uh, actually, before I joined the Science Park, I led my own uh, company for 10 years in the recruitment and staffing. Okay. Uh, 
working very close to the academia, to the tech sector and to the industry and manufacturing companies. That was the seed, let's say, to uh, jump into the uh, science and technology. Maybe, because it, of course, uh, opened my interest to various kinds of, of questions and, and policies taking place. So I had a broad network when I joined the Science Park, but now it's even broader. And um, I'm, I've am i always been very curious to learn. Uh, so uh, this position and this platform working in a science park, which is very multidisciplinary and yeah. you move across sectors and talk to everything from business leaders to politicians, to students, to uh, civil servants, uh, or even um, citizens. And it's very rewarding to get so many different perspectives uh, and take them into account. And then, of course, working both locally, nationally and internationally. That makes a new dimension also. Perfect. And what would be your advice? I mean, you've been uh, 10 years uh, uh, with the park, with uh, Lynch Pink, Lynch Pink Park. Yes. Uh, so, uh, and also uh, with the association. You're dealing with a lot of uh, people when it comes to innovation and science and technology. What would be your advice and uh, personal recommendations to people mm -hmm. that want to that have ideas and they want to uh, develop them into into something new? Yeah, and uh, I I'm so uh, impressed by all uh, entrepreneurs uh, that want to um, they, that carry their ideas and want to bring them into life, and mostly I I get impressed by people that to have a long-term vision that they really want to succeed in. And my recommendations would be to always uh, try to understand the customer needs and uh, ask as many questions as you can. Try to it, all, it all goes down to the customer every it time. It all huh? goes down to the customer because you, you can have a great many great ideas, but if no one's interested, there's no, no business within exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah. And try to identify also growing markets to grow with a growing market is much easier than to like to try to establish one by yourself and to, of course, uh, surround yourself with people that are uh, not like-minded, but that can challenge the idea, challenge you, but exactly. also make it mm -hmm. even better. And a final advice would be to not lose control of your company in the early stage, but actually maybe have a longer development time before you take okay. in uh, external investment uh, so that you don't lose the control because then you might lose the passion. So I would advise to take more time to develop uh, and uh, uh, when you know that you're going to break, then you can have external funders. That means also more patience, huh? More patience, yeah. yeah. And that is my maybe the biggest challenge for an <laughs> But I would yeah. say also like uh, being in the science park for 10 years, uh, I've also moved uh, within different fields. I, I started working out a lot with passionate people, uh, entrepreneurs, startups. Then I moved on to scale-ups and the growing companies and learn more about their propositions to, you know, uh, grow their business based in Sweden or Europe or somewhere else. Yeah. And then I moved into more open innovation and transformation, working more with academia, the public sector and the business sector to find how can we drive change together. And now I'm very curious about system innovation and, and how to drive a uh, large uh, uh, change, uh, system change and to tackle, uh, like, for instance, the climate crisis. Uh, Lena, let's move to our last question. Okay. Uh, that will be something of uh, your future expectations and uh, what do you think, uh, how do you think the future will, uh, will come when it comes to deep technology, uh, AI, digitalization? Mm -hmm. AI is developing so fast that I think we haven't seen any, any change uh, like this in the, in the recent years. No. It's so, uh, amazing and it, it's uh, moving very fast and I would advise everyone to jump on the train, uh, start exploring, learn, uh, be critical, ask critical questions. That's really important in this phase that we don't just adapt but also uh, create something that we want to have. Uh, take the ethical uh, perspective into consideration, the personal integrity, but 
be there and use the technology. I'm very happy that we got Chat GPT because now we have a large adaptation and a, a movement and interest uh, to learn more about AI. Uh, in the best uh, kind of worlds, the AI would, uh, you know, uh, release us from all the boring tasks and and give more space for creativity, for discussion, for exploring what kind of society we want to live in, what would actually serve humanity and and how we as humans also can contribute in, in better ways. Uh, because I, I do believe that we need to feel uh, that that we can bring our gifts to the table, that we can be part uh, of a part and feel belonging to community and, and you know, uh, where we're living and, and breathing the air. We, we want to do good. I think that's a human instinct. And uh, so I choose to be, be very hopeful when I look at the future. I know there's a lot of challenges uh, that we are faced with, but I think to keep uh, the mindset of how we can create uh, a world that we all want to live in and can live in side by side that that must be our 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 vision for the future and the vision for the association uh, the vision for the association is of course to grow our network and to also uh, learn more from each other and to I would say build bridges uh, globally when others are uh, building walls. Uh, that I think is really, really important because I choose to think there will be a future when we don't have as many conflicts around the world where we choose to work together and side by side uh, and not against each other. So to grow the network, to learn more, to have an open mindset and to be very inclusive and collaborative. Excellent. Perfect. Thank you, Elena. Thank, thank you for your time. Thank you. Uh, thank you, everyone, for watching and listening. This is Elena Miranda, the president of the International Association of Science Park and Areas of Innovation. And we look forward to have you once again uh, in, in sometime in the future. Give us the developments and the updates on this uh, important area. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.